I love, I, love that you, I love that you sent me a DM over Twitter. What? I was totally going to get Hi, everybody. That. Hey. Oh, Hi. no, you're here. What do we do? Um. Um. <laughs> um. Don't you say um. That's my line. Um. So, uh, I'm Sarah the Rebel. I'm O. Katrina. I'm Jared Rosen. And we're hanging out in the Rebel base. Yeah. Anyway, um, congratulations to Derek. Um, check him out on Twitter. I announced him as the winner. Um, he picked our name. We are now forevermore going to be known as the Rebel Base Podcast. What we do is we talk about uh, video games, comics, and other geeky things from the perspective of crazy cat ladies. Yay! Uh, mm. Yes. Uh, so Jared is our guest today. Jared, uh, you may know him from uh, Hot Pepper Gaming, which, oh my god, if you have not watched it, please treat please yourself. Do. Go watch Markiplier first. He's my favorite because he, <laughs> he has a reaction. And then my second favorite is Andrew WK. Oh, my, no. That was my least favorite. No, no. <laughs> what? Uh, that was being there. That was my... I love... Okay, first of all, Andrew and I have a very special sweet man love. Okay? We have a thing for each other. We're uh-huh. very into each other. But that moment was like the scariest seven minutes of my life. And I've fallen out of a moving car. <laughs> um... So don't watch the Andrew WK one until you've watched a few. I would say watch it because no, don't watch it until you've watched a few because it's not as funny if you haven't watched like five other Hot Pepper Gamings and seen how they normally go. (laughs) It it won't be funny to you if you haven't like seen them before. But please go watch Hot Pepper. He got an endorphin high for for eight straight minutes. Spoil it, let it happen. No, I'm gonna have you tell the story though. Yeah, I'm really gonna have you tell. I'm gonna have him tell the story in a little bit. But first, I wanted you to know that Jared also is a writer. He's phenomenal. Like he makes me really jealous. Mm-hmm. Um, and he used to write for Lisa Foyles. What the hell is that show even called? Uh, uh, the Good, the Bad, and the Rating. That's that's right. Where Lisa um, Foyles and I will be uh, will be teaming up again for a special project. Soon. Awesome. He's Very written, cool. He wrote for the Nerdy Nummies episode that you may have seen with uh, Muppets. The Muppets. Yes, Holy I wrote for Rosanna Pansino and the Muppets. I write for Indie Static. Correct. Right now. He uh, actually, we're going to talk about his article. Uh, in a bit as well. Oh. Yeah. yeah. You didn't know. I didn't tell him. I knew he wouldn't yeah. come. Yeah. He, he, yeah. he was yeah, late, so we didn't plan. She told me I wouldn't come, so this yeah. is great. I'm here. <laughs> I can't go. They locked the door. I did. I, I did lock the door. I, he's not lying. Anyway. He's actually glued to his seat. Uh, we didn't glue him, though. Um, so the I way did. this generally works is, real quick, we talk about current events, and then we have a topic for the week. So our topic for this week is E3, of course. Hey-o. Um And also, you know, getting some insider perspectives from Jared, who is very well known in his gonzo journalism way. This is, this is, this is, a, this is recent. This is a recent thing. Jared, can so. you pass me my, my juice over there? Your juice? Wait, that's, that's mine. Mine's on the that? other side. Why is your... I left it there. You hurried me and wow. I panicked. Oh, and... Katrina. Oh, <laughs> see what we did there? Uh, see what we did there? We had a frame. Oh, um, oh, we're also going to be looking at some of your comments and stuff, and if you want to tweet at us, um, you know, use hashtag #RebelBase. If you see us like looking down and stuff, we're we're actually checking our phones and reading Following your comments. Following you. Yeah, we're we're not being dicks. I'm not checking my phone. <laughs> Jared is Jared turned his phone off because he's a good guest. Yes. Um. So first off, current events that are going on. I want to talk about the Luigi Death Stare videos. Have either of you? Well, first of all, I think it's important videos? to note that. You know, last year was the year of Luigi. Yes, it's true. Um, and this year, he is very angry <laughs> that it's over. <laughs> Extremely upset. Didn't have enough time in the sun. It was his <laughs> first time in, like, what, 25 years? I don't know. The, the Zawardo <laughs> move in, uh, in Brawl really brought him back into the spotlight for one second. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, you know, mm-hmm. he, he, once, even, even uh, his, his own game yep. did not make him as popular as that move in Smash Brothers. Bless his heart. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't know if you guys have seen it. If not, you really need to go watch a few. Kotaku has rounded up some of the best ones. Uh, what I would like to know is why early 2000s rap music really speaks to people when they're making these. Like, every <laughs> single video is like, they see me rolling, or Luda, or... Nelly, it's like what? I only. What year is like, it? I exclusively listen to Chameleon Air when I'm playing Mario Kart. So, mm-hmm. why would you do that? Why would you no, put that no, hand over no your reason. eyes? No reason. I'm fine. Was that that was a good reference, right? That's a good joke for the podcast. Podcast joke, making it happen. What so, have you done? Oh, and I supposed to, am I supposed to listen to like Immortal Technique? Is that too mainstream for you, Look, Sarah? <laughs> I don't know who Immortal Technique is. 
Oh! I'm just gonna take. I just that listened card from you. to. Hello. I just Did you just like, take her black card? I took her black card. White people cannot take people's black card. It is written in the Book of Gold. <laughs> Excuse me. That is Jewish. A <laughs> Jewish. So technically, no. I'm like. I'm like oh, golden. Jews can take anything. That's I'm like, right. I'm like, I forgot. I'm like golden oh rod, like, like an eggshell. Jews, <laughs> I'm not, Jews I'm not allowed. Quiet. Jews can take everything. I forgot about that rule. You yeah. win, sir. I'm going to invest this and then give you a nice return. <laughs> Let me take this off. <laughs> um, I exclusively listen to Prince and Whitney Houston. Katrina, have Hi. you seen any of the Death Stare videos? Uh, I have. Um, a lot of what you said has already kind of covered it. See, um, the Mario Brothers are very near and dear to my heart. My dad uh, was a Mario cosplayer. He got published in Nintendo Power. And so, like, my uncle is always called Luigi. And so... He hated it. Right. Yeah, he hated it. <laughs> and he hated, hated it. Hated it. Hated um, it. My dad loved it. Uncle really hated it. Um, so yeah, you know, like seeing Luigi Death Stare is just like, wow, it's it's just like what Tio Coleman feels every this time we call feels, him Luigi. This is how Tio feels. I I know. <laughs> I feel. I understand. I know. I know. Nobody wants to be a little mustache man oh, except for my <laughs> a little mustache man. Wow. Except that is the for most, my father. The most emasculating <laughs> thing you could have said. Can, a tiny little mustache man. Can somebody hashtag tiny little mustache man? I need to remember that for later. Uh, <laughs> Katrina, everybody. She, this is why she's my co-host. She, she brings a big butt. Oh, I completely forgot. I was going to do a gimmick for you guys. Good. Katrina and I were going to sit on either side, and we were going to do fusion ha, and then like turn the camera off for a second, and then turn it back on, and you were going to be sitting here. Oh. Um, but we... You didn't do that. We didn't do it. Uh, we so. had to you update Excellent, and yeah. we would have told you a lot if you were here on time. Well, oh. hey, the reason I would have been late. here at 7.50 if the parking was okay. Yeah, the parking in my house is terrible. Please don't blame Jared. Uh, he did. He, he kept me abreast of <laughs> abreast. I, he kept me abreast of everything. I left way earlier than I normally do to come here. Normally, I'm, I'm very late, but I left on time, and mm. then I got here, and the little thing said that I was late, and I was like, no, and then I tried to park, and I was more late. <laughs> I was like, no. <laughs> I was like, no. Oh, so uh, unenthusiastic. When I'm really upset, this is what I do. Uh, no. <laughs> no. No. Okay, guys, this is Duvall very quickly. You're gonna get. Maybe we shouldn't drink and do podcasts. Maybe we have. We're not juice. <laughs> Delicious juice. What are um, you saying? Apple juice. Mm -hmm. Yes. So. Um, it, is, it is technically Apple. So e E3 liquid? is coming up, like we just said. Um, we're gonna get more in depth about like deeper stuff about that. But um, you know. The, the news articles are ramping up, the videos are ramping up. People My have email inbox is ramping up. My <laughs> email inbox is swamped and I don't like it. I just stopped the I love it. See, I'm not doing press for E3 this year. I'm only coming for the After Dark stuff. So, like, my inbox is ramped up with party invites. I, I don't have to do yeah, appointments. I guess, I'm very I guess. excited about parties. <laughs> parties are actually my favorite part of E3. Funny actually, story. Parties are my least favorite part of E3. Because you're actually, like... Uh, a real nerd who cares about the games. No, it's not. I'm a fake it's, geek. It's, no, because not at all. first of all, I come from the underground scene, and come. these parties are really bad in comparison. No, yes, this is true. But yes. second of all, like I don't know what it is about E3 parties, but they're just like the worst industry parties. Let me tell you something about E3 parties. E3 parties are very awkward, but you get free drinks. And so that's why I really like these parties. At GDC, they were doing free drinks too. And I quite love GDC parties. I love GDC. I actually I love, love GDC, GDC parties. parties more than E3 yeah. parties. Oh, I love GDC parties. Yeah. Pax Prime, kind of like iffy, kind of back and forth. I feel like Pax mm. Prime is a lot of bars versus. A lot parties. of bars versus like clubs, but yeah. there are there are club parties. E3 is very it's very LA. The parties are very LA, and I don't know if I just don't appreciate it. Nobody that. talks like to a, each other. They only hang out with their friends. It's really awkward. I love, I love it's watching the, how awkward it is. You I watch love the, it. the dance floors. Yes, it's like, like oh, people yeah. are just like either like, crazy like this people or people are just like oh, no no I'm if you, doing if, if, if doing you get there here. on time and there's like there's nobody there but there's like some DJ just like throwing it down like really <laughs> into it but nobody's on the floor and, and it's they're just like, like a really no, famous they're just doing DJ. this no, and there's like, always one person on the floor no no because what happens is like that there's like a group of people who come in and then they're like poking out into the floor so there's that guy on like the iceberg tip of the group just like. <laughs> And he like slowly kind of migrates he away. Out to the <laughs> oh and no, maybe just, not. Like, everybody's like with their drink. Oh my god, he's doing it! Oh please, God, don't make it. Oh, he's dancing now. I have fear for my life him? on E three dance floors before. They they get a little they get, rowdy. They get, they get really rowdy. Those dude, those parts get really sloppy. They do. They get really sloppy. And that's I think why I love them so much. Um, so E three, we're gonna talk more. We're gonna get more in depth about that. Uh, this is a little bit old now, but we didn't get to talk to you last time we did it, but uh, we went and saw X-Men Days of Future Past. Yes. Mm. Oh, yes. X-Men Back to the Future. Yes. Yeah, I back that movie. Back to the days of the past and the future. 
Pass. It was cool. It was like Good Morning Vietnam and also <laughs> X Men. It was it was great and so like you know um, hello you cats. Just pet my cat instead of focusing on. This. I like your cats. There are cats in he the rebel base. Um, he likes he likes meow, my meow, meow, yeah. meow 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 meow. Podcast. Yeah, um, um, so I really enjoyed the movie uh, because I knew ahead of time that there were going to be changes. I can totally understand a lot of the changes. Um, you know, as much as we love Kitty Pride, like who would have gone to see that movie? Only us real fans. Like Hollywood knows they want to make they want to make money. They know that the only person they can rely on to get people to see an X Men movie is motherfucking Wolverine. And they're gonna extra rely on him to continue to be naked. I hope. Oh man, the can, can I Wolverine? just point out that that entire movie was like a giant retcon of the other previous movies? Oh yeah, they were just like, like, like what we other? fucked up, guys. What we are the, we are ready to change. They were like the Wolverine. What? No. Why is that? I don't even remember. I was like, that. why does he have metal claws? And my the friend next to me was like, shh, we'll find shh, out later. Shut up. And yeah. then they never explained it, and I was like, his claws. <laughs> his claws. Yes. Um, of course, please go see it for the big Quicksilver scene. Oh, yeah. He um, should have been in that movie way more. He, well, see, the thing is, if Quicksilver was in the movie more, it would be ten minutes long. Because Quicksilver would <laughs> run in, take care of shit, it's like, it'd be like, oh my god, Mystique is like doing stuff, and he'd be like, where is she? And they're like, um, I don't know, like DC. Bam, bam. I locked her on the third floor. Um, what else? Like, what so, do you need? I what do you need? everything. I'm right here. I'm great. Like, it's, it's really he good to see yeah, how he giving was, he was. He was, yeah, he was really like a deus ex machina character. Yeah. He was like, oh no, we're in deep trouble. What's going to happen? Oh wait, Quicksilver's here. Uh-uh. At the end. And I love that he was like in D.C. at that time of his life. Like, yeah, like, oh, I know a guy who would have been in D.C. at this time. What? How Why? convenient for you. And they clearly have the moment where it's like, oh yeah, my mom dated a magnetic powers guy once. Hmm. Or how many of those there are. Hmm, ha, huh, hmm. I, okay, so what's really funny is I was so distracted by watching him and watching, like, how cool he was that I actually forgot for a second that he's sitting there in the elevator with his father, and then, like, that whole scene was just ten times funnier to me, but I was late, so I didn't want to tell anybody, so I couldn't be like, oh, I get it now, wait! <laughs> it just, I mean, he's so, they seem so different from when you read the comics, mm-hmm. like, who that character is, you know, when you're seeing them in the past and he's, like, a teenager. And especially, like, kleptomaniac. Yeah, and, like, Quicksilver himself, like, you, the comics, the people that read X-Men comics lightly don't really know Quicksilver that well. Like, usually he's just, like, in the background when Magneto's there, like, oh, man, there's some Scarlet Witch drama going on. I guess I'm gonna be quick. Yeah. And, like, then you get to, like, House of M and Son of M and, like, you, like, really get to know him. And he's, like... A fantastic asshole, and, and for a while he was banging his sister. You know, that was for cool. just a little while. That was super cool. Don't what? No, just, I mean, no, I, no, I know. I, I, I <laughs> actually do know. Uh, because originally, I, when we did our cosplay, um, where she was Scarlet Witch and I was Quicksilver, I was trying to figure out which Quicksilver to be. Uh, and so I did a little research into his older costumes, and that's when I learned about that and saw that cover, and I was like, oh. White people. You know, no offense to any white people. Sorry! Um, it's you commonly big. It's okay, I'm, I'm Jewish, guys. It's, fine. <laughs> it's like eggshell or Cersei and Jamie, guys. <laughs> uh, so um, Escoblade says he's more looking forward to Avengers than Quicksilver. Ooh! Dude, Guardians of the Galaxy. Guardians that is, of the Galaxy. That is, okay. I'm looking forward to Guardians of the Galaxy because, one, I really, really liked God modding with Rocket Raccoon in Marvel vs. Capcom. Um, because it was ridiculous. It was like, look how tiny he is. Oh my god, what did I just do? Oops. Um, and, and two, Chris Pratt is in it. And I loved him in Parks and Rec. And I'm very excited. He is very muscular now. He is very. He he has gotten into, Chris Pratt, you have, you have gotten into shape. There, and I can tell you. he's watching this podcast. I can, since you're watching this podcast, specifically (laughs) for me. For Jerry. I just want to tell you, as Uh, your close personal friend that I am. (laughs) I have had friends in the past who've been like, well, he's funny, but he's kind of... When they saw that trailer, they were like, I'd fuck him now. Speaking of that, this is not geek-related, but it just reminded me of that. Chris Brown got out of jail. Yeah, finally, right? So, Hooray! No, I'm he didn't lose any of his female fans when he beat the crap out of a lady. But he has gained some weight since going in, and he has come out, he's about 70 pounds heavier, and he has lost half his female fan base. Whoa! We need to stop being shallow, everybody. Let's just love people for the evil woman beaten creatures that they are. Yeah, like, wow. hey, you know, uh, that reminds me of that, that Boondocks episode where it's just like, um, they're just like walking around trying to figure out why girls are like still into Chris Brown. And they're like, Don't, what? He beat someone! 
Many ones. Many ones. <laughs> Many. Yeah, uh, I have so many Chris Brown stories, but I won't tell any of them to you. Personal uh, ones. We also saw that they are personal, yes. They're, like they're very personal. Well, not they're, as personal as he would have liked They're them. deeply personal. <laughs> okay, Chris deep. Brown stories. Podcast. Deep. Um, we also saw Godzilla, uh, which I really like, <gasps> enjoyed. I enjoyed it. I loved that movie. Yes. I went with the warp zone. Most of them hated it. Davis specifically hated I it. I saw his tweets. He was very he was upset. Very upset. I went into that movie expecting, because I've watched all the Godzilla mm-hmm. movies, and they're all, if you watch a lot of Godzilla movies, you realize they're all the same. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, there's, it's an hour and 40 minutes long, the first hour and 20 minutes are like, it's about people talking to each other in some terrible story that you don't care about at all. Mm-hmm. They're established like, oh, these are the aliens this time, they're coming down, here's Monster Island, it's crazy. Third monster that's crappy, that's destroying some stuff, oh no, it's the true villain monster, they're gonna team up, and then Godzilla shows up in the last... Five to ten minutes, kicks everyone's ass, goes home, Thanks and then for... they roll credits. Right. Yep. So if you <laughs> like the old school Godzilla movies, if you like that nostalgia and stuff, like this oh, is it's exact. It's, it's the perfect. exact movie you would have hoped for. It's everything I ever wanted. Anymore. Like the biggest problems with it were things that were originally problems with the, the Godzilla, Godzilla movies. movies. Yeah. Yeah. Like we have a bland hero we don't really care about because he's not actually God the save hero. The family. Like been yeah, in the military. Come on, how many white Ooh. military esque Men rescuing their wife, child, daughter, are we going to have? Like, we, we went through, in Geek and Sundry's office, we went through, like, a list of, like, 14 movies where it was all exactly the same. And then we got to Independence Day, and we were like, and a black oh, guy. Black guy and a Jew. <laughs> and a Jew. Black guy and a Jew. Independence Day. They I'm saved s- the world. I'm still mad that y'all showed the aliens blowing up the part of Africa where there were no cities. But, you know... <laughs> <laughs> Nobody would have known it was Africa if they hadn't done that. The entire <laughs> continent of Africa mm-hmm. is the most important. Yeah, they had to show like the, the two like tribe people. Right, like, they were the like, sand. there's like a little nope. tree. So that we one tree, what tree, the one they... bow bow tree from like every book cover. <laughs> yes, about that tree. Africa. You know the tree we're talking about. The one from the Lion one. King, yeah. and uh, also the play the Lion King. Yes, mm-hmm. from everything. <laughs> from, from everything. From everything that has the word Africa in it. And two greater the cradle Africa of life. Africa is just the Lion King. <laughs> It's and two greater Pandora's box. Yes, exactly. Um, so yeah, so uh, Godzilla happened. Um, what else was there? I, you know what I really liked about uh, Godzilla? Can I just say? Sure. In the in the movie, th- there's a part where Brian Cranston stops being in the movie, and like that point, everyone in the theater was like, "I'm done." We had people walk out when Brian because wow. they was like, "Okay, well, th- there's a clear part where like, all right, well, Brian Cranston's not gonna be in the movie anymore," and people just got up and left, and I was like, "Wow." Whoa! Wowie. It was very. It was just all very interesting because I think they made a, a, some missteps with like seeming to have other stories that just didn't pan out. Like, mm-hmm. dude, that whole first story was really interesting. Right, and that was one story, and you think it's going somewhere, but it, it transitions completely and not very yeah, well uh, into the sun. And then we have the um, what's his name's character, the uh, the guy who studies Godzilla and his assistant. Oh, oh, um, um, oh my god! I can't remember what's his, his name? name for some odd reason. Ken, no, um, no. Ken Watanabe. What's his name in the it's, movie. It's something. Doctor oh, something. Doctor Sarazawa. Which, by the way, is the doctor who killed Godzilla in the very first movie. He's probably the most famous and well-known human character in all of Godzilla. Right. And so in this movie, like, you keep seeing little moments with, like, I think him and his assistant were just acting so well that I expected something else to he be there. He had, like, a big man crush on Godzilla, didn't he? Right, he did. Yes. I believe that he is Godzilla the God. is the one to replace the nature <laughs> and save everybody <laughs> and make out a little maybe when the Whoa. camera's not on me. You can't <laughs> tell. No one can tell you that we're not making out off camera. <laughs> so, yeah. So there were, like, little bits where you think, oh, and even his, uh, his wife. Like, she was acting so hard. You really thought, like, she was going to have something to do, but... But no. You mean, wait, you mean like the... The, the Olsen... Tw- oh, the Olsen. The not Olsen twin. You mean... Uh, Elizabeth Olsen. <laughs> not Maggie Gyllenhaal? Uh, the, who looks just like her, right? Who looks just like yeah. Maggie Gyllenhaal. Uh, I was like, very is scary. that, is that like, a younger Maggie Gyllenhaal? Like, this is not a that? spoiler, but at some point she goes down into the subway, and you think, like, shit, stuff's about to happen, but but no, it, it doesn't. You know what happens when you go into a subway in a monster movie? The thing that happens Pacific monsters. Rim. Yeah. Pacific Rim or... Or Cloverfield. Or, uh, Cloverfield. Cloverfield. That shit fucking... Cloverfield. I didn't want... I lived in New York at the time. I didn't want to go to the subway anywhere. I was like, these guys are going to get me. With the big human-sized ticks that do yeah, this. Yeah, like... Yeah. And then they make people... <laughs> they, make people they make people pop. Can somebody get that? <laughs> Jared Vegan Tick. Somebody they, get I that. Always lo- I love those in Clarkville because it's like, oh man, one bite and you pop. Yep. Like, you just like... 
Bye. And they, and they had, Goodbye, like, favorite they character. They had, like, the, the rocker chick. Like, no, nah, I hate uh, this stuff. Oh, no, a bite. Uh, Pop. And that was it. It's just yeah. like, that makes no sense. Okay, yeah. sure. Um, Maybe so she was allergic. But I really love the end of it. I'm not going to tell <laughs> On you. On the wiki, they have science for it. I'm not going to spoil it for you. But at the end, what Godzilla does, I want you, after you've seen it, to come back and tell me you've seen it so I can tell you what Godzilla was thinking in his head at the very end. Uh, so we're going to move on to She-Hulk controversy. Uh, yeah, like there's just to con- touch on Wait, the, there's She-Hulk there, controversy right now? Uh, it was, it's actually a, a little a little bit old. Um, it's about a week old, I think. About a week old. Um, and gosh, I forgot this guy's name. He is a... He's not important anymore. Yeah, he's not really important anymore, at least not at Marvel. Um, what do you do? What do this, you say? This comic writer, or not right? Oh, he is... He is at the helm of one of the new movies. Which one is it? Oh, the Batman and Superman. The yes, the, the Batman movies? and Superman he, movies at, uh, at DC. He uh. is he is like uh, one of the guys at the helm of them. And uh, first off, he said Martian Manhunter is completely unimportant. I'm like, look, he's the Whoa. only sane, the only sane person in the Justice League. Like everybody else is a drama queen. Martian Manhunter goes to get shit done. Like that's he's why. Like, the All right, League. I'm gonna go phase and. I just slurred. Go, okay. I'm gonna handle this real quick. You Batman, you keep rooting. You guys yeah. can have your mer- your your nervous breakdowns. I I need to go do work. Um, Aquaman, you keep being important. So he like shot on Martian Manhunter and said the only reason that he would ever be in a Justice League movie was to be experimented on as a carcass. Um, that sounds like racism to me. First off, Mar- so, a planet Martian is racism. Martian. <laughs> Martian racism. racism hates him. Um, and to continue his anti-green racism, he went on and Next said later. that. Yes. Oh, oh, Zack Snyder? Wow. No, not Zack Snyder. That's what Paul said. No, it is. No, no, no. Zack Snyder did not say it. It was some fucking Rob Hayward or some kind Rob of... Rob Hayward. Some stupid name like that. I don't know if that's actually his name. Anyway, it sounded like that to me. Um, but then he went on and said that uh, She-Hulk was a, uh, a slut that was only created to fuck Hulk, which only happened once in an alternate universe canon... That Wait, didn't, well, she wasn't even in it. They weren't even in it. Like, yeah. it was about the kids was, yeah. that they had. Who so, were hillbillies named, like, Billy Joe? Yeah, because they were, like, old men from That was a what if. Yeah, yeah. Right. the old man, which, like, by the way, exactly. I like those. So, so, yeah, so, like, a whole bunch old of controversy man, showed up, and then fucking Stan Lee replied. David Goyer? Stan Lee David himself, Goyer, there we go. Stan Lee himself Stan Lee came out. himself was, like, Came out of, like, the weird, like, mountain cave that he's been living in, eating passerby, to, like, personally rebuke. Hey, you. I actually remember this because he was like, We never did that! Stan Lee <laughs> superhumans! And then he like flew off. <laughs> <laughs> We're making another quarter season show on ABC Family! <laughs> yes, so Stan Lee replied to it and was just like, You're a dumbass, that's why you're not in Marvel. And, um, snap, and snap, yeah, and he and said snap. he really loved the character of She-Hulk as he should because she's fantastic. Uh, and that was the She-Hulk controversy. So like, you know, I mean, leave your thoughts in the chat, and I'll read it. I guess when we're done or something, or use hashtag Rebel. Wait, so what? What happened to this? Was he just like a? Was it so Marvel this is really the any consequence given right. to him because DC doesn't care. What I'm most of course DC doesn't care. One of the Marvel characters sucks. We agree. Yes. What I'm, one of them. Sucks. What, I'm most, what I'm most concerned about is the guy who believes that female superheroes were created simply for lustful reasons, and who is. At the helm of a movie where we know Wonder Woman is going to be a love interest by the actress who was picked to play her and by what oh, they said gosh, about Batman. Right? That actually, right? Yeah, this makes good. this is not good that's for not her good. character. This is probably not going to lead to a very interesting. And there was Wonder already Woman. so much. Yeah. Like honestly, like I'm interested to see how this actress portrays. I saw a picture of her and I'm like, what? I don't, I don't see a problem with this. Like, like physically, I'm, no, I'm but... physically, I don't see a problem. But like, I'm. I'm really interested to see how they characterize her because that's really where it's going to be important. If she does a good job, then like, great, I don't care who you are. But like, if they make it bad, then I'm just like, well... So that's my concern. I've seen her in Fast and Furious. I know she is. I know she can... It doesn't matter. She can work out. They can add CGI like they do to the male superheroes. I'm not concerned about her body. What I'm concerned about is she plays kind of a love interest character where I've seen her. And we know she's going to be a bit of a love interest. And now I know that we have this guy with this mentality... At the helm of this, I'm yeah. very concerned that yeah, Wonder no, Woman right. is simply going to be the superhero we all want to fuck, mm-hmm. which is basically what he said She-Hulk was. To be fair, though, She-Hulk gets around. She-Hulk is a sexually important <laughs> woman who understands her vagina and is the, a lawyer. Uh, Just the, she gets wait, around. time out. First of all, do you know how many lawyers? All, do you know dueling many, fingers. Do you know uh, let me, can I just explain this? Can I just pussy? explain this? Can do you just, know how many lawyers get pussy? All of them. Can I just explain this? I rest my case. <laughs> Wow. First of all. <laughs> that was awesome. She was that, like, uh, objection. Yeah, but she's actually wrong. <laughs> no. She's wrong. Not wrong. Not wrong. Uh, the uh, Janet, 
the uh, the non She Hulk version of She Hulk mm -hmm. is uh, is very sexually frustrated and reserved and like weird about that kind of thing. But the gamma radiation when she changes actually brings out like the innermost psychological aspects of her personality as well. Mm -hmm. So in She Hulk form, she actually is more sexually promiscuous because it's repressed in her human form. That is why they did that. There's a reason for it. You well, if I were a lawyer, I'd want to have sex all the time, too, because I'd be stressed that out. Because you're, you're stressed out yeah. and you have a lot of money. Exactly. What are you going to do with it? Spend it on, like, a penthouse apartment that you eventually lose when you get disbarred for some sort of weird criminal proceeding? Yeah. Mm. Oh, Goyer also made that nerds don't get laid joke, which is not funny to any nerd because we know we're having fucking orgies with ten Princess Leia cosplayers. Like... Like, motherfuckers I've seen, late. okay, look, I need to actually, shit. I need to, like, check Craigslist pre-E3 for, like, just to, like, post all the origins and go, like, look, guys. Like, pre-Anime Expo, there was, like, this big, last year, there was this, like, big post that went around going, like, look at these dudes starting a brony or orgy and shit like that. So, it's, it comes around. If there's a con in your area and you're looking for an orgy or you're looking for an orgy to make fun of, like, get in there. Yeah, if you're Craigslist. looking for an orgy, don't go to it. Don't, don't go to those ones. Don't go to those Like, orgies. please don't. Like, don't Just on a, on a personal... personal we care level. for you. He's trying to have more of the ladies for himself. He's... he's I care clearly. for you. Don't go to a brony orgy. <laughs> yeah, don't go to a brony orgy. Try to avoid con orgies, just in general. The, the, the... They're fun. Just use a condom. Anyway, yeah, so now problem. we're moving on to the subject of the week. <laughs> Yay! So our first subject of the week is E3, and our second subject of the week is Star Wars, and our third subject of the week is Jared Rosen talking about shit. And our fourth subject is my husband, Oberyn Martell. We did not add that to the list. <laughs> I um, did. <laughs> okay, okay, that could be in your top picks. That's like my... Like fanning yourself. Well, yeah, it's actually just, really I not... do believe I have the vapors. Right. My father, the mayor, will hear <laughs> about this. Wait, so I'm going to yeah. add Oberyn to your... Your picks. Uh, sure, yeah, that All was right. it. Oberyn? Oh, God. Oberyn. Man, Oberyn who made, like, every... We're gonna, oh. We have to talk about a pick. And also, we don't want to spoil anybody. Yeah, so right, I, so I can't be spoilery First about subject it, is E3. Um, basically, what we're looking at here is, last year, E3 was all about the console wars. That's why I'm wearing a shirt from Loot Crate. It's pretty dope. Bam! Um, what... I just that, made a no. sound effect to a couple oh, of Oh, about right. my... I thought you were talking about your shirt. No, I'm like, no, no my shirt doesn't... Emerald problem. Lagasse, bam. Bam! Bam. All right, so anyway... Uh, so this year, it almost seems really quiet, and it seems like nothing's really happening, but then you have to remember, like, last year was this huge console wars, and now it's the chance for the game companies to actually show us what they got and bring us the games for our next-gen consoles, because, mm -hmm. you know, some people, Xbox One, <laughs> uh, aren't really doing that. So, uh, first of all, Jared, do you have any games that you're really excited and looking forward to this E3? You know, I, I spend a lot of my time in the indie sphere, mm -hmm. so actually, like, I, I just... I'm interested to see what individual developers are doing right now. Mm -hmm. uh, honestly, keep your eyes at the Indie Mega Booth. Um, Indie Mega Booth this year, like, and it's been growing steadily every year. Uh, Kelly's doing a really good job of making it like really, really big and awesome. And there's just a lot of inclusiveness as far as like where the indies come from and what they're making. But there's a lot of really cool, really creative games on low budgets that are coming out at a very rapid clip. It, it looks a lot like kind of the landscape of games during the PlayStation One era, where there was like a different huge selection of games coming out every month and that's kind of what's happening there mm -hmm. really important to keep your eyes there um as far as big release titles go i'm interested to see uh the the new bethesda horror game mm -hmm. um yeah, yeah, yeah. i i forget what it's called evil the within. victorian oh, evil no. within not the order um yeah. evil within looks really cool really into seeing that uh how that pans out and then of course destiny will have a presence which they're, you know, if they if they do the simul simul launch to a degree that I think they're going to do there, so. I'm also pretty interested in Destiny, but I'm also very concerned for Destiny because I know some things that did I can't you, share with you all. Did you did you see the numbers that like if every person who bought a PlayStation Four in the world bought a copy of Destiny, it wouldn't make back its money? Right. <laughs> yep. So there there's some things going on with Destiny that make me very. My cat is walking around, and he has a ball of fur. Attached to his face. Which is furry. <laughs> Sorry. That's a really <laughs> dumb cat. Can you maybe assist him before he swallows that? Look at him trying to... Okay, sorry. He's okay. so no, dumb. Don't he don't wants it now. He wants it back. He's such a dumb idiot. <laughs> oh, I love you. That's why we love Bailey. <laughs> He's um, so dumb. So I'm, I'm pretty excited to see, though, because it, it has a lot of potential. So I would just like to see what they're thinking and what they're going to do and what the story is. Because uh, they've yeah. given us a bit... But it's definitely, you know, here's what Here's what lot. you should be looking at this E3. There are going to be a lot of games that are going to be showcased this year that are not 
necessarily going to be releasing this year. Mm -hmm. They're next year's games. Um, they are at early stages of development or mid stages of development, closed betas or closed alphas. Um, but I would suggest looking at those because they're going to be skipping one release cycle, or at least for six months of a release cycle, and going right into a development phase that will kind of be like when the really good new IPs come out for the next gen consoles. And that's why I'm kind of concerned because it's like, you know, they it was like we're in such a rush to get these consoles out before the other guy and to get them out on time, and then developers just couldn't keep up with them, and yeah, as a the, result, we're we're suffering. I just mm -hmm. I literally just got because I just got a new job. Um, at, I have not been able to talk about. It. I, eh, I could talk about it later. If we're, Yay, if we're we actually that, should talk about new jobs. Yeah. I also um, got a new job. But I actually have not. I haven't mentioned it yet publicly, so I might be able to exclusive. <laughs> 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 um, yeah, I just need to sign the paperwork at this point, but it's they already gave me the verbal offer everything's cool um what? but yeah uh I, I just got a ps4 because i finally like had enough we can to play do it. together now play what together um we like there's there's don't start, about to have a multiplayer here's the thing the the ps4 and the xbox one both have this incredibly small selection of games like really small i went on the playstation store because everybody had always told me like psn i never had a ps3 so like psn like that's where it's at Go there, get stuff. And I know that Sui Coden 2 either just came out for PS3 mm -hmm. or is about to re release for PS3 and PS4. So I was like, oh man, Sui Coden 2, my fucking jam. Right. I can't wait for this. And I jump on to PSN and there's like two PlayStation Plus games for free mm -hmm. and then like 12 titles that you can get in total. Mm hmm. It was just the saddest little wasteland. And one of them's like Dynasty Warriors 8 Extreme Legends Complete. And I was oh like, God. done, bot. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I like to play Don't Starve, and I've got Final Fantasy now, Realm Reborn. And we played Thief, which I didn't like, and um, Lego Hobbit, which I didn't really like. I didn't like, I don't know, I guess I don't like Lego games. And What did you do to Thane? Uh, he got a little squished. She got real mad. He's fine. The, the, the action figure is fine. He just got a little squished. I really wanted a Legion, actually, and I was never I able to find Bane. one. I love Bane. I would bang Bane if he was a human. Well, no, if he's real. For that. I'd still bang him as an alien. Are I just you, need him to exist. Are you, like, waiting for, like, some uh, Indian in the Cupboard magic shit to go down <laughs> so you can, like, get him? Whoa. Oh, my God. If I had a cupboard that did that, <laughs> I would be banging so many action figures. You heard it here first, folks. Exclusive. Sarah loves to have sex Rebel with action Rebel Base exclusive. Garrus would be in there. They would be in there. I, I mean, Ayla top action would be all, in there. Piccolo would be in there. I didn't even fuck that cat woman. Garrus, Piccolo doesn't have Garrus a penis. Garrus semen could kill Piccolo you. Piccolo has a penis? No, Navix don't have penises. Really? Because the thing I saw said he had seven penises <laughs> and had drawings. Anyway, um, <laughs> so my ne my next question. Wait, week. it's my turn. Oh, oh, sorry. What are you looking for? Jesus dude? Christ. Okay. Um, <laughs> okay, I got so, distracted. Anyway, I'm also looking forward to Destiny. Uh, kind of concerned about it, but otherwise looking forward to it. I have really weird picks, I guess. Um, I So, like, I get stressed out normally because I have oh. a very stressful job. Dynasty Warriors, the, uh, like... There's Dragon Age! Dragon Age. Oh, I didn't even actually tell you guys what I was looking Never forward talk. to. <laughs> so, I, just had to, I just had to say it, because I just so totally I'm going to tell you, I'm looking forward to The Witcher 3, uh, seeing a little bit about that, and looking forward to seeing Dragon Age Inquisition. Uh, I'm looking forward to the indie mega booth because I love indie games. That's where all the best creative, awesome stuff is happening right now in games. I personally think I'm gonna look for um, Switchblade Monkeys games, Secret Ponchos again. Just keep playing it at every convention that they have it. Um, the folks behind Guacamelee are working on another game, so I'd love to see more about that. And of course, I'm interested in Far Cry 4 because as Jared will tell you, I have a problem. I have played like. 90 hours of Far Cry 3. I'm gonna murder you with my hands. With his hands. I, I like to find all of the great... Can, can, can I say this? I got this game when it came out early so I could do my review for Polar... No, the Game Station at the time. The We hadn't even changed over to Polaris yet. It was the Game Station. And... The week I ran through the main campaign, like, because when you, when you review a lot of times you have to just rush through the main campaign, do a few side missions, kind of get the gist of it, and then go on. So I did all the crafting things, killed all the animals, got a few relics, did some side missions, beat the game. And I was like, okay, great, like, I'm done. And Sarah was like, let me borrow it. I'm like, well, I have a lot of games to play. Like, I really want to spend some time on the on the single player. It was really fun. I want to, like, complete it, get everything. Mm -hmm. I handed it over. This was the worst mistake ever. So this is... The week it came out, I gave it to her. 
She still has it here now, and when I asked her back for it before this podcast started, she was like, give me another month. Just give me one more month, man. I'll make you see heaven. And I'm like, what the hell? I was going to say, I'll make you see heaven. Listen, I loved, I'm a completionist, and they tell me on the map where all of the loot boxes are. And then you where can't all find of them. them. No, I find them. I watched you no, not find that them. That was because I didn't know that I needed, um, that basically anything that I couldn't buy, I thought I didn't have all the powers yet. So I thought I was eventually going to get something that would help me dig, but then I realized I had all the powers and I needed to find a nearby cave. And once I did that, I found them. I have found almost all of them. I have like a tiny little section of the second island left and then the game will be yours again. Anyway, I'm really looking forward to Far Cry 4. Um, And I found that controversy about the cover really funny because I looked at the cover and I was like, oh, it's some guy with his hair dyed blonde who's like some dictator. And everyone's like, it's a white guy with a brown guy. And I'm like, that's, he's white? And and no, he wasn't white. So that controversy was interesting, and I can't wait to see what the actual story is, because they're always going to be a little offensive, because they don't know how not to be, because bless their hearts. Mm -hmm. Well, also, it was just, it was like a cool, I I enjoyed the, I enjoyed the main characters. I think it was the the little grunts were a little more racist-y. It was also the fact that he had sex with, um, what's her freaking name? Citra. 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 Because it, it wasn't necessary, and it was like, this is a white man's fantasy. I get to go to an island, I get to be a hero, I get to save everybody, and I get to fuck the hot island chick, and I get to be the hero of the brown folks. And it was like... Or murder everybody. Yeah, I don't... I don't know. I, I got something different from that. I understand where everybody came from on that one, but for me, I was like it was very much like a Heart of darkness kind of thing. And I'm like, alright, they may have overstepped a few boundaries, but like I see what they were doing doing with it. Mm-hmm. Well, that's what I said. They felt like they were doing kind of a, a, some, a something talking about it. They yeah, felt and like I, it was a I, bit of a satire. I actually, I, I'm, I'm more agree with that argument based on the context of the game, but I see how, I see how you could say otherwise. Like, right, I'm so, not, I'm not blind to the controversy. Right. I'm just like, well, I kind of agree with the other side more in this circumstance. So in this mm-hmm. circumstance, Kind of like I, how I fell, fell on the side of the controversy when God of War Ascension came out. Right. I was like, no, you guys who are like defending it are wrong. This yeah. Is, so for me, I, I saw that they wanted it to be a satire, but as I was playing it, I was unhappy while I was playing it. Because I was just like, I can't, like, couldn't, couldn't Dennis have done something? Couldn't Citra have done something? Like, and no, see, like, he needed to come and save everybody. And so, like, you can say it's a satire, but if you do all the exact same things, it's not a very successful satire. You're just cashing in on how everybody else made that money. And that's the difference between stuff like Bioshock Infinite, where it's just like, no, things were actually just fucking like this, like, in that time period, even though... We're in the sky. Um, sky racism. Sky racism. Magical sky racism. Uh, and, and things like Far Cry 4. But <laughs> Wait, I had no idea this show was big enough to get Daniel Radcliffe on as a guest. <laughs> yeah, I didn't either. Where is he here? Can I talk to him? Danny! <laughs> also best friends with him. He, you're best friends with everyone. So I'm excited for E3. Yeah, um, yeah tell us why you're excited. I, you know, I'm, I'm excited. Here's for why I'm excited again. <laughs> Just heads up. So, um, I'm actually excited to see what's up with uh, Hyrule Warriors and to hopefully watch Nintendo dig itself out of the hole of shit it's put itself in with, yes. Oh, the, Hyrule the, Warriors. Yeah, oh Hyrule God. Warriors. Okay, totally I, okay I get stressed out, obviously, because my, my job and stuff like that. And, like, I love Dynasty Warriors games because it's just one where you can go in and you just kill the shit out of people. You just get 50 dudes and you kill the shit out of them. And it's just like... Oh, I'm so glad I just killed the shit out of those guys. And that's why I'm excited for Hyrule Warriors, because I love Legends of Zelda, and I love killing the shit out of dudes and stuff. So I'm excited for that. Um, there was also The Order, which I'm uh, I'm really excited to see more of. Um, I'm still really jaded to, like, uh, as far as, like, Ubisoft or Ubisoft releases go. I'm a little jaded. I feel like I've been hurt before. I don't know if I can go back. And I really, like, I love Ubisoft. Before, like, like, I know a lot of the developers. They're all really nice guys. And then they're like, ha, 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 here we go, breaking your heart with this game. And I don't know what to expect. Um, hopefully, They laugh like cartoon Frenchmen, by the way. <laughs> all do. developers. They're going to break your heart. Cheeky oh. no They're the chef from The Little Mermaid. Or <laughs> uh, uh, Keenan in the bathtub <laughs> yes. with his rubber duckies. Oh, yes. Not Pierre Escargo. <laughs> Pierre, let's, that, let's talk about Pierre Escargo, but not he's, about Keenan Thompson. <laughs> I heard he's a big meanie. Um, but there are a lot of things that I'm excited about. I'm, I want to see, like, now that we're out of, like, the, the, the console war area, where we can go with games, because this is what we've been waiting for since before the console war, because it's like, cool, we're going to have a new console, and we already know 
all of us knew that we'd have to wait like two years to get like substantial games like started. So mm -hmm. yeah, I'm really excited to see what comes from that. Um, yeah, ha ha, early adopters. Hey right? oh, ha -ha. Yeah, you had to wait a whole year. <laughs> you're so <laughs> dumb. <laughs> um, they are dumb. You're dumb. <laughs> Sorry, you're not what dumb. Were your, he what were your, your pre-order bonuses for that, by the way? An extra controller. Ooh, extra controller. I didn't even get that. Let control. <laughs> continue. Um, gosh, there was one more game that I was excited was for. Was it Sunset Overdrive? It, yes, Sunset Overdrive. My friend Brandon Winfrey is behind the team with that. Um, and I saw a bunch of the previews and the gameplay. It looks like a lot of fun. Like I, I'm really excited to see what happens with it, and also the website is hilarious. So, I, you know, I'm cool with that. I mean, I'm down. So, um, so besides those games, that oh wait, 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 one more thing. I have a thing to talk about. Hold on. This is why we're interrupting you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm interrupting you back. This is. I have a quarter to fill Kay. now. Um, so Arkham Knight got delayed, but I really hope that we see something or anything on it because I really like playing Batman games last year. So. Yeah, that's it for me. I know things about it, but I can't say them. Um, but we can tell you later. Yeah, I, I know I can things tell you when the cameras turn off. We'll turn off the camera. We'll I'll talk about the things we actually know about a lot of these games. We can't tell you. Um, so how do we feel? Of, how do we feel about the uh, the release of the Xbox One without a Kinect to help with pricing? Safer. Uh, I that the Kinect scale like as a guy who's worked in government, the Kinect, and then having Microsoft go like, oh no, we're selling your data. Like, we're selling your information. I was just like, I am terrified of this machine. As a girl who likes running around without pants on in her house, I yeah, also... The the connects. I know that people are like, well, they would never use it. But I'm like, okay, even if they're just using it for marketing purposes, the marketers are also reselling the information. People who are getting that information for, like, you know, larger corporations as, as sort of like a data collection unit, they're reselling the information. It's not, like, I am loathe to say that you know we're always being spied upon but like it is a surveillance society and you have to understand that when there's a piece of technology that watches you pee like if you have like a, a bathroom near where you play games then that's weird like you shouldn't or have a piece of technology like or maybe you pee in your game chair maybe you have a, maybe you have a catheter <laughs> i don't know but like it'll watch you with your dick out if you if you're sitting there naked playing games, which I do on a very regular, I like case, to like play regularly, naked constantly. I enjoy naked gaming. I don't wear clothes, but uh, like it's just like it records what you say and it sends it to a data collection center. It records what you do and it sends it to a data collection center. It records your gaming history as well, sends it to a data collection center, and then they sell the information out. That's weird. I don't like that. I'm glad they got rid of it. I feel really bad for the developers of Fantasia. Mm -hmm. I feel incredibly bad for them because they went in thinking that they had, like, a hard market point on the amount of people who, like, whatever the amount of Xbox Ones were, that's the amount of connects. That was their audience. And now, like, the numbers are all fucked. Mm -hmm. Well, it's just unfortunate that people don't know about the technology that we have to play 3D motion games without any kind of console. I mean, 2D Reality came out with, um, uh, basically, they can take any camera, like, even your iPhone camera can become a motion capture gaming device. Yeah. But the consoles don't want you to know about this because then why would you bother getting a move getting or Getting a one hundred dollar connect. Getting yeah. any of these things. We have the technology where you don't need any of that to make a game that you can play like this. Like yeah. mm -hmm. it's just unfortunate. I think a lot of it comes back to the reason that Microsoft is currently getting just shit hammered by Sony right now. Yeah. Is that they treated their customer base during the three sixty era like garbage. Mm-hmm. And we all knew it. It's not like nobody knew. Because, like, every time I talk with a person who owned a PlayStation 3, I get my games, I get my online gaming for free. I get all mm -hmm. of this, this huge library with PSN. I don't have to deal with, like, their customer service is better. I don't have to deal with their bullshit. Like, yeah, there was, like, the big PSN, like, password leak or credit card leak. Yeah. But a lot of people weren't affected by that in the end. Mm -hmm. And Sony made up for it in a big way. Yeah. And then when their servers, when they, they had to shut their servers down and they came back online, they're like, Here's all these games. Mm -hmm. Just have them forever. We're really fucking sorry. And, like, Microsoft fucked up again and again and again, and their, their like, their market ideal, I guess, they kept going back to, was like, uh, Yep. And they were like, like, we didn't even get so much as a sorry. When PS3 came out, Sony wasn't, like, trying to apologize for anything, and now, mm -hmm. basically, and they were they were very full of themselves because PS2 did so well, and now we're seeing, like, the exact the, yeah, opposite. Yeah, it's the exact opposite. Microsoft people thinking say, that they had that, they had that market share, and it's like, you treated your customers badly, we remember, and we mm -hmm. don't want to stick with you anymore. Yeah. Right. Like, I'm sorry. And then they came out being like, 
here are all of these anti-consumer practices. There's a good article somewhere about like why the the practices like if they were used to like the best of what they should have been could like could have worked. Mm -hmm. Like why discless games could have been great or like why cloud sharing to like a limited degree or like always online connectivity could have been great. Mm -hmm. But like from a user end perspective that is horrible. That's mm -hmm. all horrible. Yep. Yeah. So I'm like, I would never be able to like give you my copy of Far Cry 3 for a year and a half mm -hmm. if like it was locked to my account. Yep. Um, and that's like, that's the problem, right? You can't resell your stuff, which is a big market right now. The resale market's huge. And of mm -hmm. course, it's, it's not game companies that don't like it. Yeah. It is publishers that don't like it. Mm -hmm. It is console manufacturers that don't like it. So that is why they're pushing so hard to get rid of it. Developers, they don't care. Well, <laughs> you know, and, and, you know, I know you said you didn't have a very great experience looking on the PSN for free games and stuff, but personally, yeah. as somebody who's gotten the PS4 from the beginning, I've gotten about six free games from them since mm -hmm. getting the PS4. Mm -hmm. On my PS3, I can't even tell you how many free games no, I no, have. No, no, the PS3's great right now. Like, and, and Xbox Live is trying to come back with, like, every 15 days, we have a new game. Woo! Yeah. Yeah. And it's like... Yeah, but on PSN you can like keep going back and getting all of them. Yeah. Like you can just be like, what's free on PSN? Oh, four games right now. Boop 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 boop. Done. I mean, and for a long time it's just been that way. Like as someone who like works in marketing and works in like community management and has like is I'm always outward facing to my audience. It's just like, why aren't you listening when you have like all these great tools? Like you have your own feedback, like uh, like functionality, and you have Twitter, and you have all these other ways to connect with your fans and you're just like we don't want to deal with it because we know we're fucking up yeah and, then, and that's like the worst thing to do when you fuck up is to go like i'm not talking to you guys yeah and that's just from a pr marketing perspective mm -hmm. uh, internally they you know the, they have a lot of offices based in silicon valley yeah and, and in and in uh, the surrounding area which mm -hmm. i used to work there and i can tell you it's horrible mm -hmm. but one of the things i also learned from working there is that there's not like you don't really leave a whole lot mm -hmm. like to the direct south is is san jose yeah. which is great and then to the direct north is Santa Cruz, which mm -hmm. is also great. And it's just like, why, or the direct, I think it's, I think I opted opposite, but that's fine. Um, the, <laughs> it's, it's geography, I don't really Santa remember. Jose Santa, Santa, yeah. Yeah, Santa Jose is Southern. Yeah, Santa Jose is South, and, and. This is more Southern. You don't know the rest of you don't know how to talk. Anyway. Um, <laughs> oh, Katrina. <laughs> but like, there, there are these places where there are lots of different people around all over the place, and a lot of people who live in Silicon Valley don't really go out of Silicon Valley, mm -hmm. and it creates this atmosphere of like smug, tech savvy people yeah. who like we're like I have all this tech my friends have all this tech it is the norm mm -hmm. and they don't really see outside of that which is why you know they were like oh well it's going to be always online connectivity and then these vast stretches of the midwest were like we don't have internet yeah and they're like what do you mean you don't have internet <laughs> and then they have like their chablis like yeah. oh <laughs> Excuse me, no. It's me, the ghost of Steve Jobs. Oh, hold oh, on. Yes, with their evil cat. Just... No internet. Barbaric. Yeah. I would like the ghost of Steve Jobs to also either be hashtagged or gift. Yeah, it's it's like it's like all of Microsoft Studios California branches were like staffed by the landed gentry. <laughs> it, was, it was like a Jane Austen novel. It's so, yeah. um, not to take us too far off, but we uh, we started late, so normally we would have ended by now eight to nine. Uh, but I believe we started about 10, 15 minutes late. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so, so we're going to go to the next thing. Right. The next so uh, yeah. we've got 10 minutes left of this podcast. So I'm we, trying to run you down. I'm trying yeah. to run out the clock. He's evil. He so talks so much. We're, he talks so fucking much. <laughs> so we're going to let you guys decide. Uh, we can either talk about Jared and some of his experiences, um, especially we're going to probe him about the Maker Game Jam. We're probing. Right at the butt. Uh, we won't talk, so you don't get nervous. We don't want to talk so much no. about the jam as we want to talk about the what the responses that you got to the article. Right, like right, that. yeah, and, uh, and that, I can talk about the jam as well. It's fine. And then the other option is we talk about Star Wars, and the other option is we skip ahead to our random thoughts and chick pics of the week. So yeah, I'm gonna go to the Star chat, Wars. girl. I like you, but we don't. But have there's time. so much about Star Wars, to talk right? About. And we could put that in another oh, podcast, as I feel, be so because we only late. have ten okay. minutes left. Okay, that's fine. And if you guys want us to just go on for another thirty minutes, like let me know too. All right, so I'm waiting. I'm waiting for responses. A lot of yes. people are having an argument about Microsoft and Sony right Which now. Which is what happens whenever you invoke both of their names, like Beetlejuice. Bingo, 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 bingo. bingo. All right, we have one vote for Star Wars. One vote for Sony sucks. One vote for Xbox sucks. We're not counting those. <laughs> you're entitled to believe whichever one sucks you want. I'm a Sony fan girl, so you're never going to get anything useful out I'm of I'm a me. journalist, so I don't care either way. And I'm just happy to be here. <laughs>
You are adorable. <laughs> <laughs> Let's skip ahead to one of our um, to one of our random thoughts, our, which is uh, yeah. that um, you know who. Oh, over it? Yeah. Oh, oh, over it? Oh, okay. Okay, so Game of Thrones uh, is now the most watched show on HBO, so congratulations. Um, so something big happened this week, and I just want to talk about it over and Yeah, we can't spoil door. the 15-year-old novel for you. But. Yeah, yeah, you know, like, <laughs> Guys, it's so great. I saw, books. <laughs> I saw this great quote today. I forgot who made it, but it was on Twitter, and it's, like, really highly re- retweeted, and it's like, if Game of Thrones has proven anything, it's that you can keep something a secret as long as you put it in a book. Yeah. From a vast majority of people, because people don't read. Um, so I just wanted to shout out to Pedro Pascal um, for being the best over in the world. Watching. We have a lot of famous people that watch this. <laughs> best friends, me and Pedro, because we're both Chilean, so obviously, my link. My <laughs> link. Um, he did a really great job at, uh, as Oberyn, and I'm really excited to see more of Dorne because of what happened, and that means that, like, you know, the the wrath of Dorne has mer- has been in- invoked, um, and there are some very cool characters coming up in Game of Thrones, and just, like, what happened? Like, that, what happened on that last episode? Like, I can't even, I don't want to talk it too much. It made me it was, not sleep. Yeah, I A lot I of my male sleep. friends were talking about the next time, like, like, it affected all of us differently. Like, I read it in the book, so yeah. I, I knew it was coming. But, but just like, to see the, it. Can I say that whoever was on the, like, the, the Wait, special effects... Wait, one second. Effects, just, we want to be sure, just so you guys know, we're not spoiling anything. Yeah, yeah. we're not spoiling anything. So we're um, just trying to talk about Whoever was it. on the special effects yeah. deserves the biggest raise in the world. And probably I could a not, couple glasses of water. I could not sleep that night. They yeah. were probably really into it. Like, oh, yeah. this is going to be yeah. great. Yeah. But, like, man, I, like, I was talking... I, again, I was talking to Davis because I hang out with the Warpson all the time. I was talking to Davis, humble like, rag. Humble, humble rag. Oh, hang on, sorry. There's this, I dropped a name on the floor. Here, <laughs> you can have it. It's the warp zone. <laughs> I'm going to bang Davis one day. You'll see. Davis, that's only half of don't you. Don't tell, no, don't let Davis, Davis will I never know, watch I know this. You're, I know you're watching She Davis. just ate him. Davis will never watch this, and yes, I ate him. Um. <laughs> yeah, no, those, those, the effects were yeah. incredible. I mean, and just, like, the way the scene played out, there was so much emotion in it, like, like, when she screamed, like, I flipped out and I, like, started crying. And it's just, like, the most intense thing to, like, be crying and also horrified at the same time. Um, it was really just a great episode. And then with everything else that happened, like, it was just really, really well put together. And, like, it, honestly, if Dinklage doesn't have an Emmy by uh, next year, I'm going to find somebody and kill them. You heard it here first. <laughs> Katrina, mass murder of more than 11. So we're going to take a break and tell you that Cyclops is a bitch. Cyclops is a bitch. Yes. Cyclops is a bitch. God damn it. Yay. He's a bitch. That was Scott. <laughs> Scott. Scott, you bitch. Um, no, I just God read the... Bitch. So really quick, I read the Marvel OGB, um, uh, X-Men No More Humans, and it just reminded me that Scott is just a bitch who pretty much does nothing. He uh, shows up with a team of X-Men, and he does nothing. He does nothing. His entire team takes care of everything, and he just sits there and yells about how Wolverine is wrong. I really and liked him in Ghost Box when he shot his own head off. Yeah. That was my favorite his and shining only good moment. Scott we, we, moment. I saw somebody tweet once, they were like, his dad is a space pirate and he shoots lasers out of his eyes. He's not lame. And I'm like, he's so lame that his dad is a space pirate and he shoots lasers out of his eyes. We and he's still lame. Him. All he does with his eyes is cry bitch tears. Cry bitch laser tears. <laughs> bitch laser tears. And... I just he had, really, he really had wanted to. Power. He had Phoenix Force power and a bitch in costume, and he still sucks. He wasted. He wasted everything. First of all, I'm like he upset left Jean with Grey. him. Like he broke yeah. up with Jean Grey for Emma Frost. Emma Frost is a huge bitch. She's a huge bitch. She's like That's needlessly. A huge bitch. Oh, sorry. I called her actually. We did a we did a, a top five superheroines for for Melvin, uh-huh. and I called her a psychic whore. <laughs> just like, but she's she's just needlessly mean to everybody. Like there's no yeah. reason for her to be well, mean to was, people. She was in charge of the Hellfire Club. Uh, well, I know, but she was she's like a just villain a for a bitch. long ass time. They're like, well, you're next man now. I was so like, 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 I knew her as so a villain. My yeah. rude. Like, comic like, time. They just I kept her. They're like, all right, she's gonna keep acting like a villain, but we'll put her on the good side. Yeah, it was very confusing. She's gonna be here to be a rude fucking bitch. Like if I were Jean Grey. Whoa. <laughs> Sorry, Jean. Wow. No. I didn't know. She's very if I, bitter. And if she, I were Jean Grey she was with my psychic... She was Scott Summers for a you. minute, so now she's very upset. No, no, no. Um, if I were Jean Grey with my psychic-ass powers, I would use them to close her mouth and never let it open again. <laughs> This is some this intense psychosis like, really right now. Like, so, this is like two Paramore songs <laughs> playing at the same time. <laughs> Kelsey, can you, Kelsey, can you tweet that, please? Um, Kelsey's so, doing a great job. 
great now job. Now we're going to talk a little bit about Jared. So for those of you who aren't in the know, Jared recently wrote an article for Indie Static. Um, he had, he was part of Maker um, for I a while. I was prior to this. Uh, and he wrote an article about a game jam that Maker held. Um, and that article received a ton of publicity, got shared everywhere, it turned into a viral article, which... Uh, it's been... It, can, I, can I say this? Yeah. Can I do the little, the little, yeah. little braggy thing? Yeah. Uh, it has been read by 1.7 million people. Um, it has been republished four times and in three different languages. That's great. Uh, and, we'll Wheaton yeah, blogged and it. And Will Wheaton reblogged it. And yeah. I found that out later from a girl I was seeing at the time. It was like, Will Wheaton reblogged your article. And I was like, yeah, yeah, it was really cool. And then she never texted me again after that. Like, it was too much. Will Wheaton is the cock blocker. Will Wheaton cock... Will... I know you're watching. <laughs> well, did you cock Jared? You just cock me out. a little bit. And I'm, I'm kind of <laughs> mad. I'm kinda, I'll be real. I'm kind of mad about it. Oh, oh, wait. Quick shout outs to my friend Boris who's watching. I, I don't have, like, personal friends watching this, so I'm actually really happy. Oh, wait, no, my friend Floyd is also watching. Thanks for the E3 invites. Go back. Sorry. <laughs> um, so I just wanted you to talk a little bit about, like, what that experience was like. Either you can talk about the game jam or you can talk about the response to your article and Stuff like that. Right. Okay. So, like, what specifically do you want to know? Um, I think it's it's cool. Just like, I know I've known your writing style for a while. Um, Jared has a very like, um, I don't want to say navel gazing because that's a negative way of saying it, but uh, retrospective, like thinking <laughs> about. I like we started when you went right to navel gazing. Like, what's a better <laughs> way? Like, but that's what like the negative form of it. Was you were, you write a very masturbatorily, but then no, no, you're just you just. Uh, you're introspective. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, same thing, right? Yeah, yeah, it is. No, it's it's a little navel gazing. Right. It's, so I understand. So Jared's style of writing is very like, let me set the story for you. Let me tell you what the thoughts and feelings and perceptions were. So I was personally surprised that so many people um, shared the article because, it, n like nowadays, what do we share? Like top fifteen cat picture yeah, faces. Yeah, like if your news like, isn't four paragraphs long, this was this book is a five thousand word, it was ten huge page huge. editorial news break and. I expected it to be like to make some people mad. I expected, I absolutely expected to lose my job over it. But I never in a million years thought it was gonna get the kind of publicity that it did. Mm -hmm. Like never. And it that thing blew up real fast, mm -hmm. real real fast. Yeah, it was crazy. Um, so do, you, do you want to tell them what happened after you wrote the article? After I wrote the article, um, uh, I actually so I was in contact with Maker the whole time. Uh, it's sort of sensitive. Uh, uh, okay. Well, I, no, okay, so I was in contact with them, and then there was a miscommunication. <laughs> so this is the public face. Uh -huh. There was a miscommunication. I was, for one hour, fired. <laughs> one hour, folks. I was, for, fire, for, for one hour, I was fired. And then, uh, and then I got a call. So what happened is I was, I was actually, my boss told me, come and get your stuff. Mm -hmm. Like, well, I'll get you box. He was very nice about it. He's like, he, he was real with me. He wasn't, like, telling me that he was letting me go. He was just like, you're, like, you're done. So I was like, okay, sorry. Like, I knew that, but thank you for telling me. So I was going in to get my box of shit, and I was waiting outside the door because I didn't want to go in because I knew that PR, legal, and marketing were, like, going insane. Right. Mid like, C-level managers from across the company were, like, out to kill me. Um... Somebody, I remember somebody was by my desk uh, while I wasn't there. Somebody uh, was by my desk being like, where's Jared? I want his nuts in a jar. And I was just like, good, great. This is nice. Um, but uh, I got there. I was waiting outside. And my boss comes out. And he's like, uh, I've just been informed that you were not fired. And I was like, oh. Because I had tweeted when they told me. Because mm -hmm. I was like, well, all, I have all this traffic <laughs> on, my, on my Twitter page. I, maybe I can get a job out of this. And what happened was they just spun around and just started shooting their <laughs> emails at their PR team, and they got flooded really fast. And all of a sudden, the media got on them, and they're just like, um, not even, like, not even, not even dealing with this right now. Mm -hmm, right. So m I remember the senior vice president of business development called me personally and was like, "Who told you you were fired? I will fire that guy." Damn. It was I was he was like he was like you were you were you were not fired you were never fired how dare somebody fire you and I was like, oh this is great. Mm -hmm. And then, um, like, a few weeks later, just, like, there was some problems with the company, so I ended up leaving anyway. Uh, that was, you know, very public. Not that ugly. I tried to make it as, as not ugly as possible while mm -hmm. still being like, this is what's going on. And, and I still work with them on projects and stuff, so it's not, it's not, there's not a lot of bad blood there. I'm sure mm -hmm. there's still some C-level managers who would like to see me dead, 
But, or your nuts in a jar. So or my nuts in a jar. Can you talk a little bit about uh, what it was like um, filming some of the Hot Pepper Gaming episodes, especially your least favorite one? Oh, I um, want to hear about that one. My least favorite one. Okay, so filming Hot Pepper Gaming is fun because we do it like every two and a half months. Uh, and we do like 12 to 15 episodes at a time. It's like a big full day shoot. We like set up at Aaron's apartment or the YouTube space. Um, and just like as people like come in, they filter in all day long. We shoot them. It's funny. Haha. -ha. And then we do ours towards the end because we need to keep working. So it's like we don't want to be like peppered out by the end of the day. Peppered out. Um, yeah. And it's really fun. And like we get to put them out over time. And we always have people who like keep hitting because we have to stagger them so that we have like a funny one. Then like a less funny one. Then a funny one. Then a less funny one. Um, so we always have one that's like at the near the end and then sometimes they do better than we think So we never really know how people are going to react to them But um, we always have people who are like we schedule them towards the end just because we're like all right We have all the big names up here and there's like a little name That's like maybe not as good so we're gonna put it towards the end and then they hit us up like every week mm -hmm. Where's my episode? Where is it? I want to see it. Where's it? And it's like I'm sorry like you're two months away mm -hmm. <laughs> Like I can't I'm sorry. One of the things that like people don't realize about YouTube is that like with higher like not not even higher production stuff, but, like, things that are series is that they're all recorded in batches. Like, yeah. With a lot of Geek and Sundry projects, we record them, like, all in one week. So Co-Optitude will be over, like, a weekend. Like, Tabletop gets filmed in a couple weeks' time. And it's then so funny when people are like, hey, next Arcade Arms episode. We're like, no. <laughs> well, actually, we filmed that a while ago. Uh, so, yeah, like, you know, heads up for those of you that enjoy YouTube series. They are not recorded every week a lot of times. No, they are, they are all in big batches. Yep. Um, so, NWK's thing, that was that took place on the last day of GDC this year. Mm -hmm. And uh, I actually was, I was coming back anyway, but I was kind of like taking my time. I'm like, I want to be at the Andrew WK shit. I want to meet him. It'll be great. Like, I come from like an underground party world, so I'm like, I have to meet him. He's like, Andrew okay. WK's the king of partying. So, on my way there, I stopped at a Carl's Jr. and I'm eating one of their, like, disgusting little sludge cakes that you can get by, like, you always see them in the front, but you never buy them. <laughs> right. So I was like, well, I might as well. Mm -hmm. And I was eating it and just like, hmm, this is a terrible mistake. And Vernon <laughs> calls me and he's like, Jared, uh, where are you right now? And I'm like, I don't know, like, San Rafael? Like, <laughs> I'm, some, I'm somewhere between San Francisco and, uh... And Los Frenzel? Angeles. Oh, I didn't know if you made those up from a combination. Yeah. No, no, it's San Rafael is actually a place. Oh, it's a I think place. it's it's there close. It's close to here, but I think a better, a more apt place would be Los Banos, which is a real city. The, bathroom? the bathrooms, a real city, Los Banos. God damn it, California. The bathrooms. That's a real city. Anyway, Continue. so I think I was just north of Los Banos, and uh, uh, he called me. He's like, "All right, Jared, we're gonna need you to go to Andrew WK's hotel, pick him up." bring him back and I was just like done I can handle that <laughs> I had six hours that I needed to like get back to the city and I was just like sure done that's fine just tore down the five oh, like God. I'm gonna make this happen my dreams are coming true tonight my car was all fucked up I had to like go home really quick and clean it and then once you go get him I like picked him up at his hotel he was very nervous to meet me I remember which was really funny because like during the convention I had tried to uh the, another writer uh, who I now know sort of, kind of, still not very well. I need to, like, meet her better. Uh, but uh, Kara Ellison was mm -hmm. there, and I tried to meet her, but I was, like, drunk at a party. So I was, like, I walked up to her, and I'm, like, hey, like, Kara, I know I'm a little drunk right now, but, like, I'm a big fan of your work. Uh, I just, I didn't want to bother you too much. I just want to say hi. And she looked like a bear had jumped out of the crowd. <laughs> I'm, like, and when I saw her face, I was, like, I'm going to go through my little spiel, but, like, I have clearly made a terrible error right now. I have made a terrible mistake. So I was just like, yeah, I like your work. Here's an example. I'm going to go now. Goodbye. And I just left like, no. But we ended up working on a project oh. that like a week later. So it was fine. But um, yeah, that was, I'm going to have to redo that. I'm going to redo that meeting. Well, I went, to, I, went, later. I went to Jenny Flected to Kelly Santiago because Nathan just said, this is Kelly. And she was pregnant. So she looks slightly different. You know, her face yeah. is a little rounder. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, nice to meet you. And he's like, yeah, she's worked on you. I was like, Santiago? Oh my God. And I did that. And he was like. <laughs> I, I'm called Hot Rod, but he was like, Hot Rod, I thought you'd be cool. I thought you'd be cool, Hot Rod. And so afterwards, I apologized to her. She was like, no, that was adorable. So we we cool. Yeah. But yeah, I've been there. No, man. I, uh, I You're like, oh, no, I fucked up. Yeah, because I was like trying to get the courage to like, approach her. But then like after Andrew WK was like, like weird about meeting me, mm -hmm. I was like, I can meet anybody now. It doesn't matter anymore. Now I just if there's somebody there and I want to meet him, I'm just like I'm gonna go meet you. Do, 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 do. Hello, the king. Mm -hmm. How's it going? Oh, what? I don't know. Kingland. King Electronics. Who knows? Um, I'm done with you. But uh, 
Yeah, it, uh, we drove back, and he was just, I just remember, like, he was, like, really fidgety and strange. He's an, he's a like very, him. He's a very intense man. He's a very, very intense man, mm-hmm. um, I will say. And, uh, but I, I love him. He's great. Like, he's perfect. Uh, and he was like, hey, Jared, are we going through Hollywood? And I'm like, I don't think so. We're just going to take, like, the 10 back to Culver. And he's like, because there's a great caviar place I want to go to. And I'm just like, what? <laughs> okay, <laughs> yeah, sure, let's do that. But we ended up just going straight there because, like, we had to make the shoot date. And I remember, like, he was there, and, like, he had his, like, his incognito, like, hat and jacket and, like, glasses on. Um, and, like, he asked us for, like, a chilled Jägermeister. Mm-hmm. So we went and got him, like, a, like, a football, in, like, a little football cozy from the <laughs> local place, like a chilled Jäger. And mm-hmm. he just, like, downed half it. And we're like, whoa! Wow. This dude. Um... Yeah, and he, like, sat outside because he didn't like being inside with, like, the heat and the cats. So, like, mm-hmm. we filmed a bunch, then he came in, and he, and he, he ate the Trinidad and Ruga Scorpion. Um, and then froze for four straight minutes. And we're just, like, like, me and Verena and Aaron were looking at each other, like, oh, my God. Like, we can't, because he can't, he was just, like, trying to deal with it. And we're just mm-hmm. looking at each other, like, either, like, we didn't know if he was going to, like, freak out or, like, be like super furious or like die or like what? Or die. We're like, we don't, <laughs> Maybe he will die. We made him sign a waiver, but we're looking around like, what is going on? Like, we were, Andrew we were, WK dies yeah, in man's we, apartment. We were in the clear. Eating we were totally pepper. in the clear, but we were looking at each other like, what is this? is bad. And then he would look up and be like, hey, Brick Breaker. <laughs> it's fun. <laughs> don't take flip. <laughs> And then, and then you only see this once in the video, but like four times he looks at the table and it's like, oh, an eyelash. Make a wish. <laughs> and then he just would be like, oh. and like not move. It was horrifying. Wow. Like later on, you can look back at it now and it's hella funny, but like, oh man, at the time it was horrifying. Like, and we finished it and we, we were like, and he's like, I'm going to go make myself puke now. It's been great. And he goes to the bathroom, like fixes Aaron's broken door. That's been broken for nine months. <laughs> wow. Fixes it the first try. Just, it's just like, I'm going to close it. Like close it normally. It works. Suddenly <laughs> we're like, what? And then he comes out. He's like, I couldn't make myself puke. He didn't drink any milk. He didn't eat any bread. He didn't even take Tums. He's like, I'm just going to ride this out guys. <laughs> The endorphin rush is incredible. <laughs> we're like, the pepper made him high. So he, we're like, do you need to go home? And he's like, I would like to go home now, yes. And so I ended up taking him home, and we hung out for like an hour, just driving around downtown Los Angeles, mm-hmm. like doing Jeff Goldblum impersonations. Oh, nice. And like just talking shit. It was amazing. Mm-hmm. He was, and he kept me like, like, you're really great. Like, I really like you, and you're really funny. And I was like, you're so nice. I love you, NWK. I love you. And it, it, it was just like, we were just both very cool. Like, I didn't have like a weird fan moment. Like, it was just like me and him just hanging out like dudes. It was great. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and then I, I let him off. And uh, and he was just like, okay, I hope this wears off. And I'm like, yeah, me too. He's like, you're cool though. And, he like, and then he left. And I'm like, does that mean Vernon and Aaron aren't cool? But he ended up, he ended up get, getting back in touch with us. And he was like, yeah, that was really fun. Like, thanks guys. So. Mm-hmm. But yeah, and he was, he was, it was a very intense moment. There's other parts of that story that I tell privately, but, like, he's an incredibly nice man. He, um, very intense. It's a very unique experience working with him, but, like, one of the most sincere people I've ever had the pleasure of working with. So, so I got to hear that story before the video went up, um, and it made me, I laughed just as hard again, but watching the video after knowing that story, it's even better. Yeah, eight minutes. Yeah. Eight, like, we fast-forwarded through a lot of that, but, like, mm-hmm. eight straight minutes of just him just being like, Dog type flip. <laughs> guys, seriously, flip is bad. Don't, seriously, don't take flip. <laughs> seriously, don't take flip. But also, seriously, please watch. Like, if you haven't seen any hot paper game, watch like three please or four do. before you watch that one. Yeah, friends don't but let then friends watch take that flip. one. Oh my god. <laughs> so, um, so quick the announcement. National flip council. Um, I think I'm the only person who has a parent watching this podcast. Hi. This, I'm actually 12. Um. Oh no, we said a lot of sexual things. Our okay. daddy's gonna hate me. I, I made Dad, a curse word. <laughs> Word. Anyway, I don't know if you guys can see this, but this is my dad in his Mario cosplay. I'm not sure we'll see him, if that's a thing that we can see. Oh, no, no. you can't. Hold you, on. Yes, her dad is a bright, <laughs> blinding light. He's a being of pure energy. Well, <laughs> my, dad, <laughs> my dad cosplays can they, Mario. Can they Google he has, maybe? You, you can Google Mr. D cosplay. Yes. Mr. D. He is, he is a uh, middle school <laughs> teacher. Mr. D's cosplay. <laughs> um, that's probably What's not he cosplay as? Big D. I like your dad. Super Mario. Um, 
My dad has two announcements that he'd like me to make. One, um, he'd like to give you the D. Stop it! Don't say that about her dad! <laughs> I'm not You're gross. the Mr. D cosplay! He's gross. My dad I'm is sorry, going to her be, father. My dad is going to be apparently on Heroes of Cosplay. Oh, that's cool. Um, say hi to Holly. On She's Tuesday, uh, so that's a thing. Uh, and then... He hosts uh, a Whose Line Is It Anyway style show at, at Florida Supercon, so if you're somehow going, uh, check out Whose Cosplay Is It Anime at Florida Supercon. There you go, Dad. I did it. I'm I'm sorry, I'd be my Star Wars toys I'm sorry now. I made, I made jokes with your name in them. Star. I'm also not sorry at all. I'm sure you laughed. He's going to meet you one day. He's an angry Chilean man. You're going to die. I'm sure he's. I sure he you're, chuckled a little bit. He probably Maybe, did. He, he probably, probably did. He but chuckled. he's also probably going to threaten to kill you. That's it's fine. It's funny because J- Jared doesn't want you to know that his dad is hilarious as well. <laughs> I really dad, enjoyed his father. My dad is in his, is in his mid-60s now. <laughs> he's a fat, former sound guy. He was He was the sound guy for Metallica. Oh, wow. Um, And he's like, he, he never came out of the 70s. Like, he's still there now. I, I like him a lot. He's the character. He hit on you a lot. He did hit on me a lot. I love it when old men hit on me because it's like it's done without any expectation that I actually give yeah. in to the hitting on. I love mm-hmm. when my dad hits on all my female friends. It's I really, bet you do. I don't. No, He's got better her. game than you. That's the sad part. He does not. He does. He, no. I, need, I need to tell Jared, you some stories because he does not. Jared, he was far more charming than you were at that point in time. He's also a fat 62-year-old man. Right, which is why I would never like, have sex with him. But I'm just saying he had some strong game. Well, look, he's uh, been doing it for a while. I know. And he rolled, with some, he rolled with some famous ass band members. So you know what? Maybe he does. Maybe. <laughs> All right, Dad, since you're watching this, he's not. Since you're watching as well, with all of the members of Metallica, both living and dead. And everyone else is dead. And everyone else is dead. And all of the other bands. My dad's not watching because my dad doesn't support anything I do because who is he even? Since you're watching dad and all of the members of Metallica, and the joke did not become very sad just now. Why you may, you may have better game than me. You may spit better game. Maybe. If we put it up to a vote, I don't know what would happen. But maybe you have better game. Yep. Potentially. Um, but you do watch a lot of anime now, so I'm docking some points. Right, well. Uh, there's nothing wrong with watching anime. It's bad anime. Wrong. Oh, it's bad oh. anime. A lot of Funimation. A lot of Funimation. Okay, so now we're moving on to Star Wars. Wait, wait! Okay, so really quick. Um, I have, I just, since we're talking about anime, I have one thing to say. So the Kill a Kill cast just got announced. And my friend Erica is going to be voicing Ryuko, the lead character. And I am very excited for her because we were on the voice acting alliance together when we were like 16. And we were the two who were typecast as little boys all the time. So I'm just like, oh my god, Erica, awesome. So really cool for Erica. Um, It's like her first big role. So check out, I guess, the Kill the Kill dub. Go on, sorry. I don't remember what we were talking about. Um, Were we talking? We were going to talk about Star Wars. Oh my god. <laughs> Try to be nice to my friend. My other friend gets all jealous. I don't like you having other friends. When these two hang out, like, and they're just all buddy buddy, I'm like, the fuck? You're, you're my best friend, and you're my best friend. You don't get to be each other's friends. <laughs> she just kind of just squeezed her out. Yep. It was, it was just time. We're besties now. We, we talked. We were just like, we were just like, it was like, it was like, <laughs> what was that? <laughs> the transforming hand thing? It was like Gandalf and the mom. <laughs> right? Just like, my throat is taking a beating like, from like, this podcast. Like I'm, I'm Gandalf and Sarah's the moth, and I'm just like, bah, 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 and then I let it go. And then, like, you come in as an eagle, and then we party on out of there, and the moth is just like, well, what do I do? I went, Guess I'll just go home, guys, <laughs> off to Fangorn Forest. Can someone also give him flying away as a moth? Thank you. Jared as bugs. Jared as bugs. That's our new show. <laughs> the Jared as bugs podcast. Yes. Okay. Star Wars. Um, yeah. Gr- gr- Lu- Lu- Lupita and Gwendolyn. <laughs> um, Lu- 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 Lupita. <laughs> I'm sorry. That was a lot to recover so, from. Lupita and, Gw- and um <laughs> and Gwendolyn are both going to be in it. If you don't know, uh, I can't remember Gwendolyn's last name. Gwendol- but she is Gwendolyn Christie. Brienne. Um, Brienne of Darth. Brienne of Darth. I wanted to say it. You Too bad. Snuck. 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 Okay. Snuck. My joke. <laughs> um, but my. Oh, the joke's gonna be on us because I predict that they will be two Mandalorian bounty hunters who will never show their faces, so we won't even know who they are Damn. in your face. Um, I also predict that if that doesn't happen, I feel like Lupita is gonna end up being related to Lando Calrissian, which would mean the only two black people, well, the only two out of three black people in uh, <coughs> outer space in the future are related 
Which makes me really sad. Um, uh, your, yeah. your points? Uh, well, first off, where's Lando? Uh, that's my Where Lando at? Lando. Where Billy Dean? <laughs> Billy <laughs> Dean can <laughs> barely shuffle across the stage. But yeah, he, he, yeah, Billy he, Dean, Billy Dean himself straight. said, where's Lando? Like, <laughs> that's why, that's how you know, like, he's not going to be in this at all, because he's just like... Nobody threw me the the memo. Yeah. I wasn't invited to the party. Like, well, even in the beginning, Harrison Ford was like, I don't know. <laughs> so yeah. I was like, I have no idea. Mm-hmm. Nobody's talked to me. And then later on, he was like, I can't talk anymore. And we're like, oh. Uh. Oh, thank God. I'm just mm-hmm. very, as, as we mentioned the last time we brought this up, I'm still, I'm not sold on this movie. They they messed up the, the newest three movies that they made for me. The extended universe had a lot of really cool storylines they could have pulled from. And they Good. just sweep them all what, away. Remember all like, those books you loved as a child? They don't matter anymore. Here's the thing about the expanded universe. Okay, all the books, all the comics, fine, get rid of them. Okay, getting rid of of Darth Ravan and the Exile is the worst tragedy ever. I'm more upset about getting rid of the children that I've grown the to know and love. Yeah, like still kids. I'm happy with them being reinvented. I really don't care. But, but they're like, not even gonna have the same names. That's fine. Okay, the same number I of just, children. Like, I'm, it's not fine, Jared. Even if we, even if we get rid of the exile, <laughs> it's not fine. Darth Ravan was it's so critical to that mm-hmm. lore, and getting rid of him just was like a blow. I'm like, look, all the other expect. Like, here's the thing. I was talking with some friends of mine at Riot about this, and mm-hmm. like, look at him name dropping again. Well. I kind of work there now. You heard it here first! Bad Robo Base Podcast! Oh! Um, exclusive shit! Yeah. We're getting anyway, those Rosalos ready. Talking early. to some friends of mine there. And we like we mention when we're talking about like like lores of different things, like the good and bad example that we use is the Star Wars Expanded Universe lore. Mm-hmm. Cause like it is it's it's good, but also it's really bad. Like it's it's good but I, it's really bad. I disagree. I disagree I, with you. I, I, I actually this really This is why you guys it. don't work on writing teams. Well, I, I don't that's care about the writing team aspect of it. I'm you're an insulting. You're writing. off the podcast. You're, you're off the podcast. It's, no, it's, you hurt my I, feelings. I just, look, hey, Get out of the hey, podcast. Too, you just moved your own chair. <laughs> He's here. really heavy. I've been eating a lot of pasta lately. God, I can't <laughs> A lot of flaws. Either way, please, if you like Star Wars at all, please read uh, Star Wars Legacy. That's actually good. It's, it's so really good. good. It's oh. about Han Solo's descendant. No, and I'm Han just Solo. saying that, like. P.S., 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 P.S. For anyone who did like the books, yeah, I'm interrupting you. Uh, they're re releasing the um, Han Solo and Lando Calrissian stories in October. Buy them for your kids. They changed my life when I was a little girl. Also, that's how Han Solo became my first husband. So. Please she buy them for your children. She was a child bride to a space pirate. <laughs> child bride, I'm gonna write that down. Child. Yes. That was me. Um, so yeah, re- really, really good books. Uh, and they're re-releasing them. They're gonna be shiny and new and you should buy them. Go on. Yeah, I was just saying that, <laughs> that the good part of the Expanded Universe um, is like the, the settings and the places and some of the people mm-hmm. conceptually. Mm-hmm. Like, there's just like a very rich backstory that's really cool to get into. The problem is that some of the writing is not very congruent. It's not... The quality isn't... Oh, excuse me. Are you talking about, you know, that movie where the Jedi were all murdered off 19 years ago, but this 45-year-old man says the Jedi are a myth and doesn't ever have any recollection of the many Jedi he probably met? <laughs> Continuity is a problem? I'm just saying that, like, th- yeah, the th- okay, the original, like, the, the three expanded movies, the first mm-hmm. three ones are bad. Mm-hmm. Okay? The prequels are bad. Mm-hmm. We get it. We all know. It's like nobody knows that the prequels are bad. I'm just saying for Expanded Universe, it's just like, if you're coming into it fresh, like you've only seen the movies and you want to get into the the Expanded Universe lore, it is such a problem. Like, there's no way to even crack that lore. There's so fucking much of it. Mm. And it's not, like, not all of it's good. Not all of it is even I'm not even saying all of it is good, but not using any of it. I know, but that's that's the... the, I'm I'm not even arguing to that point. I'm just saying that I understand why they did it, because it's not Congress... I have no understanding, because they do stupid shit all the time, and I'm not going to go see that movie, and they can kiss all of my ass. Well, (laughs) all of your ass. All of it. All of it. (laughs) Not just part of it. Not Not, just the grundle. Not a corner? Not the corner? Not the grundle? Kiss the entire the, ass. The grundle. I don't know what the grundle is, so I'm going to continue ignoring you saying <laughs> I'm not going like to talk a, about this anymore. It's like a lady taint. Um, okay. So. The grundle. Like, a, like the mythical Beowulf monster. Except that that's a grundle. Oh, it's a grundle. Get it? 
No. It's a mythical. I, I know the mythical, mythical creature, ogre. but he's not my booty hole. So he's anyway, my talking about the, the new movies, movie the new movies though. Okay, so like this is what we know about them so far. One, Tatooine is in the new movies. Great. great. It's definitely in a shocking twist of fate. Well, he's Wait, the Tatooine in a, in a Star Wars movie? What? No. Oh my god. Stop it. Two, um, they are they're going back to like old school puppetry. Uh, we I, saw that the that first. That's really cool. That's in great. That, in is Jim Henson back on for that? Uh, well, I think he's no, no, dead. No, Jim Henson. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. No, did they did they <laughs> resurrect Jim Henson through dark necromancy to bring him back? It's Star Wars. It's they could skeleton have skeleton just puppeting around. <laughs> um, I doubt. I his son would probably. I would still work with him. His son would probably not be as happy about that. <laughs> no. Um. So yeah, old school creatures are back and very excited about that. It does look like they're working with Jim Henson. It does look like their type of creature. Um. Uh, 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 the Falcon of, is, of course, going to be in it. It's being reconstructed. Cool. And it looks like a large, actual set piece, so that's really fun and exciting. It's not just a little model that does this. <laughs> Wee! <laughs> <laughs> See how they say we together like they're best friends? Sorry, Sarah. <laughs> best but you should have given back my Far Cry 3 Don't series. be so really chinkly. <laughs> that was my other word of the day that I had to use. Okay. I don't even know what you said. I so didn't... really chinkling. So I don't really know what chinkling. that means. It means you're um, that's vaguely racist. There was something else, and I put it in our notes, but I don't have them, and Sarah has them. So. What is the, what is the, look, new creatures, old school uh, facts, Falcon X, Wing Link, Tatooine confirmed. Oh, oh, and then, uh, uh, um, like, because now we have four whole women, whole, whole women, four of them, not four and a half, not two, not three and a half, four of them. Oh. <sighs> Leave me alone. I will kill you. I know um, you will. You're a crazy bitch. <laughs> um, uh, versus, like, the 20-plus or so in the extended universe. So, like, women with actual speaking roles who talk to each other. And... But I'm excited, because, I mean, it's better than one, better than two. And, you know, I'm probably going to just make someone buy my ticket to that first one. And if it works out, it works out. I, go, I love going into movies with no expectations or really, really low ones or expectations where, like, when I went to see Kick-Ass... Like, I had read the comic, and it made me really sad, and it disturbed me, and it, like, fucked me up. And then I watched the movie, and I was like, this is like watching a Disney movie in comparison. Yeah. And I'm relieved. Thanks. So, Yeah, we'll I, see. uh, I went into Maleficent, actually, thinking, like, oh, this is gonna be, like, a cool retelling of, like, a classical <laughs> story. And then I saw it, and I'm like, this was not that great, and also they, like, literally dropped the patriarchy off of a cliff. Like, they literally picked Yolo. up the patriarchy, My patriarchy and dropped it off of a cliff. No spoilers. God. I haven't seen it yet. I, I really want to see it. Um, in a shocking twist. So, we're, yeah. going to, we're going to wrap up now. Oh, yeah. It's um, like almost Jared, time. did you have any last final words before we kill you? Uh, R.I.P. Car Talk. <laughs> uh, don't do drugs unless nobody's watching. Yes. YOLO. Swag. 420. Did Xbox we? 360. Why didn't we like it the show? Why did <laughs> I don't even think he tweeted about the show, so we wasted a golden opportunity to use like <laughs> a high like, profile guest. I tweeted about the show. He made a tweet. I he, made a tweet. Yeah, it's you say it like I made a poop. I made a. I made, I a, made a tweet. I made a. I did the tweet. I'm proud of me. Mommy, I tweet her. I tweet her. Mommy, I tweet her. <laughs> I'm, I'm totally uh, sober, by the way. This uh, is, this is yeah, sober. This is, this is us sober, and it's yeah. really disturbing me. We've got to rectify that, like, right after. Our podcasts are going to get better and better as we go. So, so right now, it's really bad. Right. It's really this is our horrible. second episode. It's going to be shitty. Like, we're sorry. Yeah, sorry. I'm sorry. Thanks, thanks I'm for, sorry like, for you to see them now. I'm sorry for you I to apologize. listen to him a lot. I'm apologize that you tuned in today to this podcast. I'm going to wow. Tell you. I'm so He's sorry. going to die. I'm so Jared's got to go now. Jared has to go. <laughs> um, uh, uh, don't leave so now don't leave me please keep watching so now we're going to talk about our chick pics which uh, you call you don't call them chick pics I call, okay, I, call them, <laughs> I, I just say do the thing do the thing they're called so. Katrina's do the thing and Sarah the Rebel's chick pics yes so, so um, we have one that is the same um, yes. this week Geek and Sundry released Spooked and woo, it's so spoopy. Oh, spoopy, uh, spoopy. Paranormal comedy by Felicia Day and the bad hat hair guy. This is her side for Felicia Day. <laughs> it's also a bug. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and the guys from Bad Hat Harry who made X Men. So they got some of that X Men fire behind them, except there are no mutants in it yet. Maybe. Um, paranormal comedy about this group of people who come together and they're all like different and diverse people and. Uh, it's basically about this uh, older brother, um, Connor, 
who uh, his little sister, after their parents died, stopped talking, and then all of a sudden she could talk to ghosts. Oops. And so they started this paranormal investigation team, and it's got Ashley Johnson, who was Ellie in The Last of Us. Mm -hmm. Really big. Really excited to have her on the cast. Um, she plays an occult specialist, uh, voodoo priestess, and Wiccan something or another. Um, Neil Grayson from Eureka is on it, uh, so we got that Fargo love. Uh, Derek Mio, who is in Greek, is in it. He's really, really funny. And then uh, Julian Curtis, who I found out is a huge X-Men fanboy, is in it. And uh, Shiloh Uswald, who has actually talked to Ghost before, plays Piper. So watch it on Geek and Sundry, please. Uh, it's really fun. It's a whole 22 minutes long. You can watch it on Hulu in the United States, so please do. Or if you're international, check it out on the Geek and Sundry YouTube channel. And uh, what I, I like the most about it is that it's kind of a subtle show. Like some yeah. of the things that you're seeing in the first episode, read the comments and you'll see things people are upset about. It's funny to us because we know what happens and mm -hmm. it's like, it's just interesting, so I, I, I can't wait to hear you guys' thoughts on it, but yes. um, I, I enjoy that aspect of it, is it's mm -hmm. not what it appears to be at first glance. Mm -hmm. uh, and I find it really funny, and I laughed out loud reading the script. Um, so my second chick pick is uh, the action um, figure Kickstarter called Elementals. It is by a group of moms and teachers who were like, how come all these action figures for my girls got like these boobs? It's like, boobs? Hello? <laughs> it's crazy. Like... They're, of course they're going to have complexes about their boobs looking at these. So they basically created female kick-ass action figures who are like all based on the elements and all like badass looking, but they're like not dressed in like tiny little stretches of clothing. They're like wearing actual suits a superhero might wear to protect themselves mm -hmm. from the elements. Um, and it's really cool and I would love it if you could go to Kickstarter and check them out. You can just look up Elementals. And it'll show up for you, and uh, it would make me happy. Is that my oh total biscuit just went live? God uh -oh. damn it! We're gonna lose our. Crowd. We gotta get off the air fast. Uh, okay. okay, my last two go, go, go. is Malice and Book of the Fallen, which if you are a black person or a woman or uh, a gay person, a transgender person, lesbian, any of those things that are not normally represented. Yeah, girl. <laughs> any of those things that are not like normally music. represented in fantasy novels, um, <laughs> please read Malice and Book of the Fallen. Um, because we're all represented in there, and it's nice. Yay! My other chick pick. I'm gonna cut up on my fucking knees while you do your chick pick. I can but still. I don't really give a shit because Kelly Sue tweeted me, and she's writing this really great comic called Ghost, and you should check it out because she also wrote Captain Marvel, which is like one of the best, and a whole other thing. And Matt Fraction got to have have like sex with her. He gets to do that regularly, actually. Um, really, really, really great story. If you are, I guess, into spoopy things. And also into superheroes. She's a spoopy hero. And I really like the word spoopy. I'm sorry. Um, um, uh, that's, I think that's it for me. That's it? I, got, I have a new job. I'm starting a movie pilot on Monday. Bye, Geek and Sundry. I love you. Bye, 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 bye. And I'll be taking over the Twitter. Hey, yo. <laughs> so, now Sarah can ask. Can, so can be sure watch to unfollow. You guys. <laughs> She's yeah. gonna be mean. Welcome to a new sassy geek and sundry. Yes. No more of that. Uh, no more that nice fluffy guy. stuff. For yeah, me. No more of that love and caring. Inclusiveness. Yeah. No, shit. no, no. Fuck that. Burn up. this fucker down. Burn but yeah, check out moviepilot.com where I am now the channel manager of the superhero section. Superheroes, guys. Yay! That's it. That's it for me. Yay! That's it. Yay! So uh, you can follow us on Twitter. I'm at Sarah the Rebel. Sarah has an H in it, like the Bible and God intended. Go ahead. <laughs> I don't know if I want to. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm Okatrina on Twitter, and you can follow uh, my YouTube channel, which is Okatrina, but with a zero for an O. She thinks she fancy. I, I am. You can follow me on Twitter at uh, at Not Quite Frodo.